What is borrowed force and when is it and when is it not applicable? So here's the, the beginning of finding the answer is starting here, borrowing, okay? To borrow, what is to borrow? It's to take something somebody else has, right? And eventually return it to them. So let me have uh, you two come up here. So let's start, before we really delve into the, the detailed answer of what's going on here, let's look at a basic situation that oftentimes is cited by different masters as borrowed force. If he's stepping in with a punch, so we're just going to have you do a basic combination, three combination, okay? Step in with a straight punch, step off line, block and punch. Now let's time that a little bit better so that now we have a situation where he's stepping in and getting hit. Heck, we could even make it easier. He's just walking towards her, taking a step towards her, and she strikes him in the face, okay? Is that or is that not going to result in a greater force than if he's just standing still and she strikes him in the face? Well, I think we all know the answer. If he's moving into it, it's going to hurt more. That's common sense. But is she borrowing his force? Well, first part to finding the answer was here. What is borrow? I'm taking something he has. Okay, go gr grab your notebook. Getting cheesy here. He has a notebook. Okay, nice brown notebook, fancy notebook. I'm just going to borrow this. Now he's sad. But I, bar I took it from him and I can give it back. Here you go. I was just borrowing it. There you go. Okay, he actually had that. I could take it from him. Okay, you can put that back for a second. Now, the second part of the answer. Now we, we understand what borrow means. The, the second part lies here. For every action, there is an equal but opposite reaction. This is basically a statement of the nature of force. When she's punching him, he's hitting her. They're both, no, no, not, you don't, now, now there's actually two different sets of reaction forces in that situation. But when he punches, or when she punches him, there's a force that he's delivering into her fist. Equal and opposite. Okay, that force does not exist until the moment of impact. So the circumstance, him moving, there's something that changed that affects that force. But when he's moving, he doesn't have a force that she can take. It's not an innate property. There is something that is. His momentum. That's the difference. He's changed his momentum. Right now in this reference frame, in this dojo, he's not moving. His velocity is zero. His momentum is zero. Once he moves, he has momentum. Go ahead, move. Step in with a punch if you want, or walk or waddle, I don't care. But now he's not moving again. But when he's moving, if she impacts when he's moving, that's what she's tapping into there. Okay? All right. Now, the, so basically what we've arrived at is this is a misnomer. You, I really, he doesn't have force that I can borrow. Although, there are a couple of circumstances where perhaps this term is a little more applicable. What if he grabs her by the lapel? Let's, and I'll pull her towards you. Certainly there's a shared force there, action and reaction, but she can comply with that force. And there's another term I like better, which is purposeful compliance. But she can comply with that force and basically use it to help bring energy into her follow-up strike. Maybe do a two-hand lapel grab, okay? And now check his arms and punch him in the solar plexus. Now let's do it again, but this time step with the other foot. Do it again. Grab, okay? She can tap into that, that force and use it against him. So if you want to use the term borrowed force, that would be a situation where it's more applicable, okay? But when he's in motion, if I, another instance, people will say, let's say I kick you in the groin, so I now send you in the motion myself. It's still his momentum I'm tapping into. I'm not taking force from him because that force is something that's shared. Okay? Got it? All right, let's move on.